Thank you. Thank you, Joan. Oh, I'm especially glad to present the award for Best Actress in this year when we've seen so many thrilling women on our screens. Bill, will you do the honors? With pleasure, Best. The nominees for Best Actress this year are Wanda Cunningham in The Price of Happiness. Loretta Fonsworth for The Laser Beam Murders. Jill Porter for Blimp. And Margot Tremaine for Naked Stand I Tall. And the winner is... Boy, you'd think they get a letter opener. <laughs> and the winner is Margot Tremaine for Naked Stand I Tall. Accepting the award for Margot Tremaine is Gladys Hunter. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm pleased and honored to accept this award on behalf of Margot Tremaine. Unfortunately, she's in the hospital tonight, but I, I know she's watching these proceedings from her room. Having been one of Margot's friends over the years, I, I know how much this award means to her. Coming to Hollywood only a few years ago, as she did, this award is a, is a dream come true, and no one deserves it more than Margot Tremaine. For Margot has given her all to this industry, the industry that she loves. Uh, little known is the fact that uh, Margot and I were both up for the role that won her this award tonight. That would be enough to strain any friendship, but not ours. On the contrary, while the decision was being made, Margot was gracious enough to invite me to her ski chalet in Aspen. What fun we had until my accident. <laughs> Skiing down the hill at 90 miles an hour, somehow my, my ski bindings broke and sent me crashing into the trees. But Margot was right there behind me to lend a hand. Poor dear, she was, she was probably so distraught she didn't know that my hand was under the snow where she stuck her pole. <laughs> anyway, Margot visited me in the hospital every day until she went on location to Bermuda to film the part that won her this glorious award tonight. Nice. Yeah, just a minute. Just a minute. Oh, Thank you very much. So, isn't it wonderful that my misfortune turned out to be her good fortune? Because if it couldn't be me, I'm glad it was Margot. Because Margot is the best. That's what she is. That's right. She's the best. That's what just. Back off, okay? Just back off. So, so, you're giving this award to Margot Tremaine, huh? Margot Tremaine. Margot Tremaine. The overnight success. Well, I wouldn't call it overnight. It's more like over a weekend. <laughs> weekend in Palm Springs with the presidents of the five major studios and two of the three stooges. See, Margo never left anything to chance. Well, fair is fair. I mean, if you have no formal acting training and no talent, you gotta do one thing or another. Margo did both. <laughs> Watching all this from your room, Margot. How are things in the facelift ward, huh? I bet you're feeling right at home. You've been there for most of the last five years, haven't you? Well, just because you broke my legs, punctured my hand, stole the movie roll that was custom made for me. Why should I be mad? Now, on top of that, you have the gall to send me down here to be your little errand girl. I'm not mad. There's no reason to be mad. I'm not mad. If I were mad, I would... God! Yes! Leave me alone! I'm not mad! I'm not mad! Harry, you're only in a big city once a year. 
What Miriam doesn't know won't hurt you. I tell you, I met these girls at the bar. And they're coming up here any minute. They just phoned from the lobby, asking if they could bring some square friend of theirs along. I said, sure, the more the merrier. Here they are, Harry. This is gonna be a night to remember.
so should I bring him down? Should I scream and shout? Should I speak of love? Let my feelings out. Honey, what the right come to this? What's it all about? mother's necessities are inventive. Let your dog lie down. He's slippery. A thousand words are worth a picture. <laughs> My mother invents necessities. Slap your dog. He's lying. <laughs> Thousands of us have picture windows. It's worth it. Mothers are an invention of necessity. Lie down. Your dog is sleeping. Worth is a word that thousands picture. Mothers of invention are necessary? Let your dog sleep lying down. I have a thousand pictures of Wordsworth. Necessity is the mother of invention. Let sleeping dogs lie. One picture is worth a thousand words. True. Well, let's hit the road. I'm pushed. Oh, another day, another dollar. <laughs> Why don't the two of you get into something more comfortable? After all, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. I'm just going to stay behind and burn the midnight oil. Oh, don't do anything I wouldn't do. Nothing ventured, nothing gained. <laughs> The rolling stones gather no moss. Help <laughs> stamp out Forrest Tucker. Onassis a day keeps the doctor away. Absence makes the heart Jane Fonda. After all that creativity, are you ready for something more musical? I certainly am. You know, one of the things that's always been thrilling to me is the number of wonderful songs written by women. Mm -hmm. Might be fun if you and I sang some of them together. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Songs by women. Music or lyrics or both. Nothing's impossible, I have found. For when my chin is on the ground, I pick myself up, dust myself off, and start all over again. Don't lose your confidence if you slip. Be grateful for a pleasant trip. Just pick yourself up, dust yourself off, start all over again. So vain. Oh, no. I bet you think this song is about you. Oh no, Jane. So vain. I bet you think this song is about you. Oh, no. Don't you, don't you, don't you, don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Don't stop. It'll soon be here. It'll be here. Better than before. Yesterday's gone. Yesterday's gone. Tonight you're mine. She's falling down. Aye, aye, aye. My pocket needs some money, so I can't go into town. My brother isn't working, and my sister doesn't care. Of course, she needs a motor, so we can't go anywhere. Whatever it is, we'll keep till the morning. Haven't we both got better things to do? Midnight. Thinking of you, daydreaming, and I'm thinking of you. 
17 that love was meant for beauty queens and high school girls with clear skin smiles who married young and then retired. It's life's illusions I recall I really don't know life at all It was the third of June, another sleepy day Jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling until then If you need me, call me No matter where you are No matter how far Just call my name Bet. Doggies don't like it when you do that to them. I don't care if he is smiling. <laughs> he wants to be a vet. <laughs> yeah, oh, excuse me. Lance! Susan doesn't enjoy that. Well, Susan, you didn't used to enjoy it. <laughs> you have just the two? Yes. Uh, it, excuse me. Gregory, don't do that to the fountain. Other people have to drink there. Uh, yes, I just, I have the two, one year apart. Lance, Lance, spit that out right now, all of it. Daddy did research, that can kill you. My husband's doing his thesis on the municipal park as a lethal weapon. <laughs> oh, I can't wait for my children to learn how to read. Alex, those are the wrong twins. No, leave them here and go get ours. I'm not sure I'm gonna make it. Oh, of course you are. It, Lance, Lance, don't do that to your nose. I know it makes your sister laugh, but it makes your mother very nervous to see you with anything metal. Gregory, take your pants off your head. Well, whose pants are they? Susan, stop laughing. You're going to make yourself sick. Oh, sick. I warned you all over your new slinky. Oh. Gregory, where did you get that toupee? to the man and apologize this instant. Lance, will you just leave her alone and give Mother the pliers? Are you walking east? Oh, no, we go west. Oh, well, it's a nice chatting with you. I don't usually get a chance to relax like this. Well, maybe we'll run into each other again. I hope so. Lance, why are you walking like that? <laughs> Oh, Richard, what happened to you? Last night you Last said... Last night we said a great many things. You said I was to do the thinking for both of us. Well, I've done a lot of it since then, and it all adds up to one thing. You're getting on that plane with Victor where you belong. No, but Richard, You've I... You've got to listen to me. Do you have any idea what you'd have to look forward to if you stayed here? 
You're only telling me this to make me go. I'm telling you this because it's true. Inside of us, we both know that you belong with Victor. You're part of his work, the thing that keeps him going. If that plane leaves the ground and you're not with him, you'll regret it. No. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. What about us? We'll always have Paris. We'd lost it until you came to Casablanca. We got it back last night. And I said I'd never leave you. And you never will. But I've got a job to do, too. Where I'm going, you can't follow. What I've got to do, you can't be any part of. Ilsa, I'm no good at being noble, but it doesn't take much to see that the problems of three little people don't amount to a hill of beans in this crazy world. Someday you'll understand that. You'd better hurry or you'll miss that plane. I don't know. Who's looking at you, kid? Attention, please. Flight 264 to Lisbon has been delayed by fog until further notice. <laughs> Well, you, you want to go to the coffee shop or something? No, I mean, remember, you promised that Monday we'd, uh, you know, and this is Monday. Is it Monday already? Okay, Fred, we got a heavy problem here now. This has been building up for a long time. I mean, I've got an awful feeling in my stomach, Fred, that that you don't love me anymore or something. Oh, for goodness sake, Evelyn, let's not go off the deep end. Off the deep end? Listen, mister, you haven't even attempted to make love with me for three months. Oh, Evelyn, <laughs> I'd hoped you hadn't noticed. <laughs> oh, honey, let's try to talk it out, huh? Let, let's communicate. Well, let's Is there not... something wrong with you or me? Let's not blow this thing out of proportion, Evelyn. I, it's just, well, I, I just haven't been in the mood. That's oh, all. Fred, our relationship is crumbling. What'd your analyst say? My analyst? I thought you were going to bring this up with yours. No, Fred, don't you remember? You were going to talk to your analyst, and then he was going to call my analyst, and then the two of them were going to analyze the whole situation together with the disinterested third analyst? I don't remember that. <laughs> because when we discussed it, you probably weren't listening. Hey. You don't listen to me anymore, Fred. You're blocking me out of your life. Come on. Well, please, don't go berserk. I love you, and I always have. Yeah, but you're not trying, Fred. You're not trying. I mean, I am, I am really, really trying. I'm trying to put some pizzazz back into our lives. You know, I mean, I've read all the books. I've, I've, I've sat through all those lectures for crying out loud. I mean, I even sat away for that silly thing that Marge said helped her and Phil. You know, that, that inflatable fish? <laughs> that was disgusting, Evelyn. Well, look, Fred, I am desperate here. Okay, okay, Evelyn, okay. <laughs> okay, it's... I know you've tried, Evelyn. It's not that I don't love you, honestly. It's just that, it's that crazy job of mine. Just the constantly the pressures, the incredible pressures. You know, it's sapping my strength. Oh, you poor thing. Yes, yeah, it's, it's taking a lot out of me, sweetheart. I, I, go, go, go. Push, push, push. The incredible competition. I mean, it's it's hell being a good humor man. No, it's just I've I've felt really neglected. I have. Well, I'm sorry, huh? I guess I was just kind of, kind of down on myself because I thought there was something wrong. Oh, you can't feel like that. Okay. I'll tell you what, let's just sleep on it. Okay? Okay. And I, I promise it'll be better. I know. Mm -hmm. Night. Night. Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. Fred. Gwendolyn, it is Monday. It's Monday already? Well, thank you for being here and for being such a... Well, you know. A mensch. Oh. Among my people, it's a mensch. Well, among my people, we say it this way. As for you, my dear friend, if you ever want to make an album or do a Vegas act or a world tour of song and dance, will you please call me? I certainly will. But in the meantime, you just carry on without me. You're just doing great. Mm. <laughs> oh. I'm very
very glad you watched tonight. And I meant what I said. Should the occasion arise, I'll be your audience. In the meantime, I'm happy that you were mine. I love you. I thank you. Good night. This is David Hartman, superstar Barry Manilow, world champion speed skaters, and the people making news tomorrow on Good Morning America. Tomorrow's entertainment begins with It Is Enough, followed by the third Barry Manilow special and...